Welcome back to Balanced Health. Today's myth deals with milk. We've all heard that drinking milk builds strong bones, can help prevent osteoporosis, and is even a tool for weight loss. But are these claims true? That's the question for today's Debunking the Myth. Well, it is a milk day here. Surely our myth is that milk builds strong bones and helps with weight loss. The truth about commercially raised milk is that it is a saliva coagulator and it has natural nu nutrients stripped out and synthetic ones added back in. And surely in commercial uh, milk, we're even seeing things that are otherwise considered carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. Milk has over 200 ingredients in it, commercial oh milk added goodness. back in. Okay. When you see 25% of it being vitamin D, that's synthetic vitamin D that's added back in because the pasteurization and homogenization process actually kills all the natural mm -hmm. Uh, nutrients. If a calf had to live off, if we took the same milk that came out of mama cow, pasteurized it, gave it back to baby calf, you'd kill the calf. Really? Absolutely. Oh my goodness. That, that calf would be absolutely void of nutrients. Unless, if, if, if it was a grass-fed calf, I take that back. It would, it would be okay. able to replace nutrients from, I'm talking about commercial raised cow. Yeah. Uh, that was being fed grain and stuff like that. Yes, it could not even survive. That's interesting. Well, that's you know, it's a it's kind of a controversial issue, but I I would encourage There's our a good viewers to at least, yeah. What is that? Organic, which we're going to talk about later. Good, excellent. Well, we're talking about diabetes and um, and insulin, mm -hmm. and um, let's talk about Dr. Wall. There's really been some progress made with curing. Uh, the pancreas, um, having the pancreas start producing insulin again, and they, they're using adult stem cells. Can you fill us in on that a little well, bit? Fascinating research looking. This is you know, type the, one? Mm -hmm. Type for, one. For type one oh, diabetes, type one. Okay. where the, the islet cells, the little cells in the pancreas that produce insulin, are killed off or die, usually an autoimmune response. Mm -hmm. So that loss of insulin allows the blood sugar levels to soar and all the damage that can come from that. Right. So adult stem cell research now is looking at taking stem cells, injecting them into the pancreas where they appear to regrow these islet cells mm -hmm. and thus hold a potential cure for diabetes. Also research in replacing the pancreas is mm -hmm. being done. Like None of this is done routinely. No. But uh, compared to embryonic stem cell research, which kills little unborn babies, and has no human research at all, none on embryonic well, no, stem no cells. No success. None. No success whatsoever. With adult stem cells, there's 70 diseases that we're treating today yeah. and dozens more in the pipeline. And yet we're getting pressured to, to use the embryonic stem cell research. You know, we're being shamed because we're against it because they're making all this progress when actually it's the adult stem cell where they're making the progress, not the, the embryonic stem cell. We just want to make that very clear. Oh yeah, in diabetes, the, that research is literally going to be life-changing should it, it should it, you know, come around for hundreds of thousands of people. Good Pray, news story. Praying for my little grand, granddaughter, oh, Macy, who will be cured, absolutely. For, for type one, what are some of the symptoms for our parents out there who might have kids or grandkids uh, that we might you know, want to go to the doctor and maybe have this looked at? Well, kids that have type one diabetes get sick fast. Yeah. Their mm -hmm. blood sugar levels go up and they have significant symptoms quickly. But there's such a small number of the total diabetics. The mm -hmm. ones I'm most worried about aren't the type ones because we find them quickly. Right. It's these overweight kids whose parents don't even realize the kids are overweight. Research shows mm. that somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of parents who have children that are overweight or obese see their children as normal. And healthy, chubby, healthy, right? In fact, if they get too thin, they see them as unhealthy. So step one is just making that realization. I preach that message to doctors, that to check that child's body mass index and to check that child's blood pressure is now critical in all of our kids because so in there's areas of the country where 50 60 percent of our kids are overweight or obese and the outcome of that Joe you said in an earlier segment that you don't even want to think 15 20 years down the line mm -hmm. I predicted in my book that this generation of kids that we have may be the first generation in American history who will not outlive their parents, mm. the first in American history. Mm -hmm. And if we as parents and in our churches and faith communities don't begin to take this problem seriously, our kids will live with that overweight, the diabetes, the hypertension, the heart disease that comes from it for their entire life and their lives will be shorter. Well, well besides the, the, the obvious ramifications of the morbidity aspect of that all, it could, it could change the face of our culture. No question. It could change the face of our culture. Um, one thing I've noticed, and I don't, tell me if this is just something that maybe I, I have seen more than is really uh, normal, 
But these pediatric exams where kids have to get for like football or whatever sport or they're going into a new grade, most of the ones that I have seen, the blood test did not call for a fasting glucose level. Hmm. Um, if they take their glucose level after they've eaten, unless it's way up, not too much attention is paid for. Don't, wouldn't, if you're a parent, wouldn't you want to ask, if they're not recommending it, wouldn't you want to ask for a fasting glucose? I think it's something you could ask for, especially for kids that are getting overweight and as we've talked about in other shows, the lipid profile to mm. see okay. what, how are my kids doing there. But even if we didn't check blood sugar and we didn't check the, the lipid profile, if we help our kids normalize their weight, we've affected their entire future. Mm -hmm. And that takes a family effort. We can't just tell the kids what they have to do, but we as a family have to decide we're gonna eat together at home more than we are out. Mm -hmm. That we're gonna have family meals together. We're gonna be careful, and Joe, you preach this message so well. We're gonna be careful how we prepare our meals. They're gonna taste great, but they're gonna be nutritious. Mm -hmm. We're gonna turn off the TV, or we're gonna become a TV-free home. We're gonna get the internet out of the bedrooms mm -hmm. of adults and kids. Very important. We're going to begin doing activity together as walks or, or what, what have you, and we're going to start getting more sleep. The average mm. teenager in America gets about six and a half hours of sleep per night, about the same as an adult. We know kids and adults need more, and we know when they get more, they're less likely to be obese. Mm -hmm. You know, on the note of sleep, real quickly, a lot of these kids that are getting too little sleep, one of the things they're doing is go to bed too late, and what they're doing when they're not going to bed is they're sitting in front of their laptop or in front of their text messaging electromagnetic fields, these EMFs, oh. when these levels are raised by the, by the exposure to them right before trying to slumber, it puts the bodies under tremendous amount of stress really? and getting into an REM mode of sleep when it's under the duress of these oh. continuous electromagnetic fields is not only affecting the quantity of sleep, but the quality of sleep. And we're not trying to be, no, we're not trying to be a doomsday show here, but yeah. this is information. That you can make a difference. Look, it's real easy. Tell your son, your, your, your son or your daughter 30 minutes a day on the internet, you know, 30 minutes a day, text, whatever it is you... But but limit it. Limit it. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing that I think we really need to point out is diabetes not only kills people, but it can make their last years very miserable. I know when we interviewed uh, yeah, Mike Huckabee, you know, um, he, he was so overweight. And so his doctor said, look, Mike, you know, it's not like you're going to live 10 more years and then die. He said, you are going to only live 10 more years till I think it was like 50, but you are going to decline and you're going to be miserable and you're going to, you know, lose fingers and you're, you know, I mean, it was just horrible. And we need to, you know, people need to realize that the type two diabetes is not just a killer. It can really compromise your, your, your quality of life. In every, almost every way measurable. And the sad thing is that it's preventable or if you have it, it's treatable and even got, reversible. Oh, Governor reversible, Huckabee is a great totally. example. Yes, totally exactly. off his medications for hypertension and diabetes simply by balanced health, mm. by balancing his life. Interesting. Quickly, are there races that need to be more concerned about diabetes than others? Is it more prevalent in certain races? Oh, without what? question. Native Americans, Mexican Americans, African Americans all are at greater risk than Caucasian or white Americans. But given the rates of obesity, we're all, we're at, all risk at risk and all worthy of that treatment. One of the things we did at, at, at Florida Hospital in Orlando was developed an eight week program where families can make very simple interventions. In fact, our study participants said, this is almost too easy. Hmm. But what we found is that families that did that eight week intervention, it's in the book, Super Size Kids, not only did they lose weight and body mass, not only did their blood pressure go down, but more importantly, their family health scores went up <laughs> because they started having meals as a family it's and spending so time as a family, turning off the TV, the internet, the video games and the cell phones. Back to God's intentions. And having yep. that God's Just divine design. Simple choices, great mm. stuff. Well, remember, if you'd like to order a DVD of this show, just give us a call. Coming up, more on milk. We'll give you tips on how to buy it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.